Obesity is one of the most important and growing health problems in the world, especially in the United States. Body mass index quantifies body fat, therefore an excess of body fat is described as having a BMI of greater than or equal to 30 kilograms per meter square. Impacts have reached pandemic proportions across the age spectrum, with 68% of the U.S. population being overweight, 34% being obese, and 5% being morbidly obese. In addition, obesity increases the risk of having diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease, osteoarthritis, and gallbladder disease. Each year, an estimated 300,000 deaths are recorded due to the obesity epidemics. The available treatments to prevent these complications caused by obesity are diet and exercise, drugs, and bariatric surgery. Surgery is necessary for patients who cannot lose weight by these methods. Individuals with a BMI of 30 are recommended to use the intragastric balloon treatment. In a clinical trial, the obese patients lost a BMI of 5 to 9, but they gained back 28 to 40 percent of the lost weight after 12 months of balloon removal. The balloons can be filled with either air or liquid, and while liquid causes less deflation than air, the procedure is becoming obsolete because the balloons deflate over time, causing intestinal obstructions and gastric ulcers. The goal of our project is to create a device that is minimally invasive, that will reduce BMI, and that will maximize volume uptake while still allowing for digestive flow in the stomach. Over the course of three quarters, our group has gone through a series of trial and errors in order to reach this desired goal. We began our journey by understanding and discussing the proposed solution suggested by our mentor, Professor Kradbar. The solution involves an initially deflated device that is inserted endoscopically and is mechanically inflated once positioned in the stomach. For the majority of fall quarter, our group has worked diligently to develop possible ideas to bring the prototype into fruition. Various topics were discussed such as possible materials, shape, modes of inflation, and method of delivery. For winter quarter, after multiple brainstorming sessions, we came up with three potential designs that address the problem of obesity. Our first design revolved heavily on our mental pad. The problem with this design was that it was overly complicated and the idea of having mechanical parts within the stomach proved to be hazardous to the body and the lifetime of the device would be relatively short. Another design that we came up with was the idea of having a travel shaped device that is inflated solely by a saline solution. The problem with this device was that the material that we would potentially use, which would most likely be a polymer of some sort, would take an enormous amount of pressure and time to inflate. Another concern was the orientation of the device that would be altered due to the harsh stomach conditions. The last device was an atomic orbital shaped device which consists of link rings that expand and collapse. While this would have solved the problem of orientation, the issues with this device included difficulty in delivery and removal of the device, biocompatibility as well as manufacturability of this device due to its complex shape. The proposed solutions just mentioned provide an avenue of success, but each contain issues relating to device failure, ergonomics, and manufacturability. Therefore, the next phase was to attempt to create a device that combats the negative aspects of our previously proposed solutions, but at the same time, encompass their positive aspects. The majority of winter quarter consisted of developing this peanut-shaped device. This device consisted of several components, including a mounted polymer ball to offset the weight in order to maintain orientation, PTFE beads, and methylene blue dyed saline solution as a safety mechanism in the event that the device ruptures. We had the opportunity to develop a rough prototype with the help of Rapid Tech. With their services, we were able to visualize the dimensions and determine the optimal structure and material. The benefit of having this design includes an asymmetric shape to allow flow of food through the stomach, pleated edges to ensure closure, and a saline solution for inflation. After bringing this proposed design to our professors and mentor, several concerns were brought to the table. These concerns conclude a potential formation of a vacuum from the opening of the GI tract with the flat surface of the device. The inability to weigh down the device to control orientation with the polymer ball and the complexity of the shape as well as the time of inflation. Therefore, from these concerns, with the assistance of Professor Kine and Professor Yi, we decided to take a different approach in assessing the problem for obesity. 
After going through several inadequate designs, we decided to change directions to a more pharmaceutical route. This new idea involves an expandable, super absorbent hydrogel that is encapsulated. When orally administered with water, the capsule degrades, leaving the hydrogel exposed to stomach fluids. The polymer will absorb the water and will expand, taking a volume within the stomach, which will induce a sensation of fullness. Our next approach was to research possible hydrogels and existing patents relating to this idea. During our research, we came upon a company known as Jealous. The company has proposed a similar idea and is in the process of running clinical trials. Their innovation involves a super absorbent hydrogel composed of food ingredients. This product, known as Ativia, is encapsulated. The capsule dissolves in the stomach and expands hundreds of times by absorbing water. Like the idea that we previously discussed, the hydrogels in their expanded form will take up volume in the stomach and cause the patients to feel full. As you can see, however, when exposed to food, these Ativa particles completely take up the entire volume of the stomach. The issue with this is that this causes an enormous level of discomfort for the patient, as they will constantly have the sensation of fullness, which does not mimic a healthy lifestyle. Another issue with this device is that Ativa particles, when fully expanded, are still comprised of individual particles rather than a single unit. This implies that individual particles can slowly trickle down into the intestinal tract and cause blockage within the intestines. Based on these concerns, we have decided to devise an alternative material that will contain specific properties, namely the type of polymer and the number of crosslinkers, that will limit expansion as well as density properties to address viscosity. Our idea is to have one intact superabsorbent hydrogel rather than individual components, and when expanded will not take up the entire volume of the stomach, but is still large enough to induce the sensation of fullness. We purchased two hydrogels from Steve Spangler Science, a superabsorbent cube hydrogel, which is a sodium salt of polyacrylic acid that resembles our idea, and a pellet-sized water jelly crystal, which is made from cross-linked polyacrylamide copolymer that resembles a current research done by Gelesis. The first experiment that was run involved measuring the change in volume of the cube-shaped and pellet-sized hydrogel in molecular water and hydrochloric acid. The experiment consisted of growing these hydrogels in 20 milliliters of water and hydrochloric acid for different time durations, namely 15-minute intervals. We measured the initial weight of the unexpanded hydrogels and the volume of water and hydrochloric acid. And after each interval, we measured the final weight and volume. The final volume measurements were done using oil because of the hydrophilic nature of the hydrogels. This implies that the displacement oil is a true representation of the change in volume of the hydrogel. Although the original weight of the pellet was smaller compared to the cube, the swelling degree was higher for the pellet than for the cube. From the figures, the change in weight is very minimal for both the pellet and cube in HCl. The absorption rate is linear and constant for both hydrogels and molecular water. The percent swelling degree of the pellets is much larger than the percent swelling degree of the cubes. The second experiment involved varying the concentration of HCl in order to determine an optimal ratio of water to HCl that will promote the swelling rate of the hydrogels. Based on our research, the stomach contains about 20 to 100 milliliters of stomach acids on the presence of the food. Therefore, in our experiment, we chose three different concentrations of HCl to imitate various portions of a person eating cycle. 20 ml for an empty stomach, 50 ml for a content stomach, and 100 ml for a full stomach. For each condition, in order to vary the concentration of ACL, we diluted the ACL with 30 ml of water. 30 ml of water was added successively to dilute the ACL concentration in each condition. After 24 hours, we measured the final weight of the cube. As the concentration of hydrochloric acid increases, the swelling degree decreases. Conversely, as the number of serving of water increases, the swelling degree increases. The analysis of the data suggests that a person would need to intake about four glasses of water to ensure high suspension of hydrogels at 20 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. The next experiment consisted of measuring the level of degradation of fully expanded hydrogels. 
This goal was to ensure that the hydrogels break down in a timely manner. This was done by measuring the change in weight of the hydrogels. The presence of weight loss would indicate degradation due to HCl. For each hydrogel, four pieces were used to obtain an average of the weight loss to classify degradation. Again, we recorded the final weight after 24 hours of degradation in 0.155 molar HCl, while the average weight of the palace is decreased by 97%. The every weight of the cube is decreased by 93%. This implies that the hydrogel will stay in the stomach for an ample amount of time before degrading enough to pass through the pyloric spinter, which has a diameter of roughly 1 inch. The next two experiments measured the amount of time it would take for food to travel through the specified hydrogels when in the stomach, which can be described by the solution's viscosity. The experiments involved testing stomach interactions containing a hydrogel with healthy food versus unhealthy food. HCl was also used in order to imitate stomach conditions and to test for degradation of the hydrogel. We used a 2 liter Coke bottle to represent the volume of the stomach, HCl to mimic stomach conditions, and blended the food to imitate chyme. In each experiment, the hydrogels were poured into the bottle first, and the blended food was poured on top. We then observed how the blended food traveled through the hydrogels. Based on our observations, the unhealthy food was chunky, dense, and displayed a higher viscosity than the hydrogel. We concluded that viscosity is dependent on how a hydrogel interacts with the solution it is submerged in. This was apparent through the change in consistency of the solution as the pores of the hydrogel were collapsing and the blended food became more fluid. This was a sign of the hydrogel degrading. After using 30 millimeters of HCl for one hour, the amount of water retained by the hydrogel decreased. The second sub-experiment involved running the same experiment containing the same components of hydrogel, but with healthier food components. The food mixture for these components was less viscous than the unhealthy mixture, allowing it to travel through the hydrogel in a shorter amount of time. From the data we presented, we found that polyacrylamide cannot expand under an acidic environment, and a person should intake about four servings of water, 32 fluid ounces, in order to maximize the swelling degree. We propose a modified hydrogel that consists of polyacrylamide chitosan, based superabsorbent hydrogel cross-linked with nn prime methylene bisacrylamide and polyethylene glycol (PEG). Polyacrylamide is typically cross-linked with nn prime methylene bisacrylamide, and chitosan is typically cross-linked with PEG. Chitosan is a natural material that is high in molecular weight. It is chosen due to its dense nature and its ability to swell under an acidic environment, more specifically at pHs of 2 to 3, which is desired for our device. The crosslinker PEG, which is used in chitosan to make chitosan a hydrogel, is biocompatible, biodegradable, and is non-toxic. Our proposed hydrogel will be a cube-shaped hydrogel that can fit into a capsulated pill. In 100 milliliters of solution of a superabsorbent hydrogel solution, Polymers typically weigh about 0.5 to 2 grams, and crosslinkers weigh about 0.006 grams of that total. Given these parameters, our superabsorbent hydrogel will approximately contain 40% polyacrylamide and 60% chitosan of the total amount. Chitosan has a greater weight because of its dense nature, which can induce the sensation of fullness while compensating for a lesser swelling degree of the individual hydrogels.